<laughs> That's some kick. Yeah, it's Finley Rider legs. Really, really rotten pipes. Saves all of his strength for kicking, jumping the into the lesser fired portals. fired his gun one last time, and the shadow vanished into the darkness it had come from. See? Nothing to it, Wake. The thought of Alice in his hands was revolting. We stood on the wooden platform of Lover's Peak, the waterfall on the mountain behind us, the lights of the radio mass blinking red in the heights above. I fought with the urge to take a swing, force myself to speak. Let's cut the act now. Where's my wife? Alice's driver's license had been placed on the front seat. The caller meant business. Barry? Ow! Ow! Thank God! Where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for a week, you and Alice. Oh, I've been worried sick. I flew out yesterday. I'm here, here in Bright Falls. Barry, listen to me. I'm at the sheriff's station. Come and get me. I can't talk now. Al, what the hell is going on? I had to get the sheriff to let me go. I needed to get to Elderwood National Park to meet Alice's kidnappers. reveals the world of his story from darkness, shapes it from nothingness, the way a sculptor carves a statue from a block of granite. If I stop, the world I'm making dies. Darkness will reclaim it. It's a long, hard journey into the dark. Alice's life is at stake, but I can't think about that, or I'll lose it. The dread lingers at the edge of perception. I'll push on. Anything is possible here. I'll write the story. I'll save her. Marvelous, Sarah. I just wanted to settle all the damage the Anderson brothers might have inadvertently caused on their recent and regrettable little outing. They are not accountable for their actions, of course. I can assure you that my staff has been reprimanded. Tor and Odin never caused any trouble to anyone when they were still living at their farm. Indeed. All we can yep. do is to slow down the progress of their dementia. Are you feeling any better, Mr. Wake? I'd like to leave. Am I free to go? Well, we still need to talk about... Am I under arrest? No, of course not. But I need to know where you'll be staying so I can get in touch with you. I'd avoid the motel. The Majestic is known for its roaches. The cabins at Elderwood are pretty nice, though. That sounds perfect. I'm Dr. Emile Hartman. I'd like to invite you to stay at Cauldron Lake Lodge. Did you talk to my wife? I had the pleasure of discussing your situation with her on several occasions. Did you set something up with her? I invited her here. My clinic is a place where... Oh, hey, oh my! Take it easy. You know what? I have to get that in my Hey, nobody move. Get your hands off of my client. Who are you? I'm Barry Wheeler, his agent. If you have business with Mr. Wake, you talk to me. You yokels won't know what hit you once I sick my lawyers on your asses. No harm done, Sarah. I'm all right. I don't want to press charges. Mr. Wake, my offer still stands. Get me out of here. What the hell was that about, Al? We don't need a replay of that thing with the paparazzi. I thought they were going to lock you up. Yep, it's not Joe Pesci. <clears throat> I had to talk to someone. I told Barry everything. He thought I was certifiable, but when he heard about the manuscript, I had him. The fact that I'd written something, even if I couldn't remember it, was enough for him. He smelled money. And he believed that Alice had been kidnapped. Anything beyond that was another story. I had a midnight appointment with the kidnapper in a place called Lover's Peak, somewhere in Elderwood National Park. The plan was to rent a cabin. I don't like it, Al. I don't like any of it. It's not good. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. It's all bad. Mr. Wake! Barry, you found him! Hi, Rose. Oh, wow. I was just thinking about you, too. Great. I was just bringing Rusty some coffee. He's on the balcony, looking after me. You're really obsessed Sports with coffee. Thing. I really need to go. No, Great to see you again, Mr. Thing. Wake. No, Later! In the hot coffee, Mom. Who's Mine's Max? Thermos. 
Yeah, there's one about. What an airhead. Jeez, mister takes a swing at everybody. This is not her fault. She's a very nice girl and, more importantly, a fan. Oh, I look at those mammoths. <laughs> I'm looking at those mammoths. They're so cute. I'm looking at those mammoths. They're bears. 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 God was killing sheep. Deer. <laughs> That's a moose. 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 And a buffalo. Moose and a buffalo. And that's... Read it. Look. Like two fish on a Colombian focus. mammoth. There's an option to focus. Do it. Read. Up. The skeleton of a Colombian mammoth. Mammothus columbus. This specimen, estimated to be 14,000 years old, was recovered from the La Brea Tar Pits in 1981. It was donated to the Elderwood National Park in 1998 when the Columbian Mammoth became Washington's state fossil, named Bucktooth Charlie. It has since become the park's official mascot. <laughs> Bucktooth Charlie. Trover! Crab, other stuff. Stegosaurus! Yup. Starfish. <clears throat> Timeline of evolution. That's rather condensed, I think. Very. Stegosaurus, crocodile, mammoth, tiger. Deer. <laughs> deer. <laughs> the deer is the pinnacle of evolution. Well, yeah. Well, what that's why they say Seriously, it. Al. What you were saying in the car, just listen to yourself. Oh, what, you sorry. shot a guy? And his body just disappeared? When was the last time you slept? What, are you high? Right Have I you been you. drinking? I mean... No! Look, Barry, I'm missing a week! And someone's got Alice! Do and everything's just- Do you understand what it sounds like when you say stuff like that? Don't get me wrong, it's a good story, could be a bestseller. But when you start confusing fiction with reality, you're buying yourself a ticket to the funny farm! Right, wait here. <laughs> But I can tip a chair over. Yes, you can. Tip a chair. 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 <laughs> Get out of there, chair. Tip a chair. You're my chair. Oh, it's stuck. Oh, that's sad. Elderwood. That is kind of creepy sounding, actually. Are you bare? Yeah, it sounds like an old guy with... Never mind. No. Thanks, Daniel. Oh. Daniel, don't... Don't say words anymore. Sorry. Those were unfortunate words. Ah, there! I knew there was one now. <clears throat> if you look in the kitchen, there might be an extra page. Oh, I'm just gonna steal from the kitchen today. Look. I'm steal the kitchen. Unfortunately. The, the green cross. Yep. All the doors are locked. Yeah, Rusty didn't have Rusty. On the other side of that room, in the back there. Oh. Oh. Right here? No, turn right. That one, that door there. Did you already check it? That one? That's how you get onto the thing with Rusty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just wondering if there was anything else before I headed out here. Hey, Rusty, avoid Rusty. Easy there, boy. I'm almost done. Hey, Rusty, right? You're right, Cabins. Oh, Mr. Wake. I'd shake your hand, but mine are kind of full here. Actually, I'm sorry about this. Would you mind grabbing the registration form from the desk? It's just across from Bucktooth Charlie. Okay, sure. What happened? Crazy poachers. Max here got his foot caught in a trap. They're illegal to use here. Hell, you're not supposed to hunt within the park at all. But that doesn't stop some lowlifes. <sighs> well, at least Max is gonna be okay. He got lucky. Toby, on the other hand... Max is still groggy from the shot I gave him, and I'd rather not leave him alone just yet. The form's on the desk across from the mammoth skeleton. And I would head to it if you would stop talking at me for a minute. Seriously, okay, boy, you we're can't almost just done go here. and meet a kidnapper! Those situations always end up in disaster! You gotta talk to the cops! She's my wife, and it's my call. Can we talk about this later? No. This whole thing is... Listen, you hit your head. I mean, geez, Al, come on. 
you gotta understand how crazy all this sounds. If you're trying to pull a joke on me, freak me out, it's working. Ha <laughs> ha, let's have a laugh on Barry. Well, you had me going there real funny, Al. You can quit it now. I think this is the form you wanted. And here oh. are the keys. Okay, you're all set, Mr. Wake. Glad to have you staying here. Thanks. Can you tell me how to get to Lover's Peak? Oh, sure. It's at the end of the nature trail. Just follow the paths, you'll get to it eventually. It's an easy walk. Nice spot, too. If you have any trouble finding it, just keep your eyes on the radio mast. It's right below that. Good to know. Look, you're asking me to believe that you shot a dude who went poof into thin air, a guy who was bulletproof until you pointed a flashlight at him. You hear that from people who end up spending time in padded rooms, strapped to their beds, wearing white shirts with too long tangled up sleeves, and eating a healthy diet of pills. Al, you sure make like cruel radio. jokes about people who believe that kind of stuff. Stop foreshadowing so much. No, please. That's just crazy talk, Al. Al. Al? We should go to the sheriff or call the FBI. Damn it, Barry, they'll kill her. This is not a goddamn debate, <laughs> Barry. <laughs> I'm going to Lover's Peak. He said to come alone. Okay, okay then. I understand. But you're my best friend and I'm worried that you're not right in the head. Tell me what to do to help and I'll do it. You stay here and if I'm not back by morning, call the cavalry. Barry grows on the <laughs> Just be careful with the natives, Al. These yokels are dangerous. Everybody hates a tourist, or it'll be deliverance all over again. Bless you. Here, let me help you sneeze some more. Oh, this place is trying to kill me. I'll bet there's mold in here, spores, poison ivy, God knows what. This is so not worth a 15% commission. <laughs> What's that thing? Spirals in time. Lock the door when I leave. Yeah, yeah, you go ahead and do what you have to do. I'll be fine. Alone, but fine. In a cabin straight from a horror movie. sit here in the dark till you come back okay. or until I get eaten by a Gru. <laughs> <laughs> Old school, Barry. I like it. Yep. <clears throat> batteries. Yay, batteries. Hopefully all of our viewers get that, Jack. So far, hot stuff got me. It's gotta be funable. <laughs> uh, how do I tell? Um, there, okay. Where is it? 15 uh, of 15 100. Of 100 and 15 of 106 manuscript pages. So, yep, get to work, lazy. Okay. I'm kidding. You're doing great. Copy and check. Fuels my writing. Hey, this isn't a real. Is painted on <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> 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 
never gotten along with Alice, but he knew <clears throat> Alan loved her with an almost frightening intensity. And now something had happened to Alice. And here was Al armed with a gun and saying things people got put in padded cells for. It was as if his friend had experienced a massive psychotic episode and was now totally disconnected from reality. It scared the shit out of Barry. So we're probably gonna be able to play too many M-rated games. Not unless we're familiar with them and they don't really curse much. I mean, we can give like warnings and just avoid it wherever we can. But you know, if the game is dropping, I knew I should have gone to the cops. This wasn't the smartest thing I'd ever done, but I was still angry with Barry for trying to talk me <clears> out of it. These people had called me right in the sheriff's station. The cops wouldn't scare them, and they had Alice. Yep. Barry had the keys to the car he rented. It wasn't a long <coughs> walk to the visitor center, and it wouldn't be any use to me in the forest. Oh. It's okay. You'll get the chance later. I'm pretty much gonna describe the forest as a maze of dizzy passages and all like. Just you. I mean, there's never even one adventure in this. I have to say, Brendan, watching Leo into the forest, you go through this game, reminds me of. Uh, Walk through the forests. Uh, oh, I think I just saw your family's yep. Welcome back to the show, folks. As promised, our very own Dr. Nelson has just parked his rear end in the studio. Doc, what's your Deer Fest plan like? My plan? You make it sound a lot more organized than I ever seem to manage. <laughs> no plan, really. Just taking the atmosphere. I'm getting a little too rickety to do much more than that, you know. Oh, tell me about it. No sack race for us older gentlemen, huh? <laughs> yes, exactly, Pat. But I'm going to check out the parade, of course. And I'll be one of the pie contest judges, too. <laughs> uh, well, that takes a different kind of constitution. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my kind of exercise. Now, Doc, seriously, you're in pretty good shape, though. You're the outdoors type. I, I know for a fact you're an avid fisherman. That's right. Matter of fact, just caught a heck of a largemouth bass early this morning. But you're not taking part in the fishing contest? No, no, not this year. Um, see, Pat, I'm just not that competitive anymore. Now I just like to take my time and enjoy the peace of it. It's no fun if I need to worry about what I'm catching, you know? Well, considering your track record, the participants are probably pretty happy you feel that way. <laughs> well, Pat, that's kind of you to say. Because birds <laughs> are evil. Yes. Okay, there's stuff in here. 
That's less of a trail and more death. It's it's a vertical trail. <laughs> I do think there are ways to go. Wheelbarrow. No, that's trail. And that's perfect. Yeah. Moonshine cake. Started this with a flashlight again. That's something. are impossible to punish, especially in Night Springs. Tonight's episode, The Man in the Mirror. He's inside, Agent. He's a weird one. So, you're confessing to killing that guy, huh? Why? And it coming? Yeah, but why would you do that? I mean, you're a nice guy. Normal. Took a kid to a soccer game. So how come at the game, you pick a guy and, quoting from the arresting officer's report here, assault the victim's head area repeatedly with the weapon of choice being a pair of bare fists? Wow, that sentence really flows, huh? Maybe you're not the literary type. Okay, so you mess him up. But why? Who was that guy? We couldn't ID him. Why would a guy like you do him like that? I didn't like his face. Well, you must have hated it, because you really went to town there. I mean, there's no way to tell what he looked like. No ID on him either. That must be difficult. But then we ran the fingerprints. Got a match. Your prints. Identical. Huh. How about that? Your son said you were wearing a white shirt when you took him to the game. Like the white shirt is on the dead guy. It's plenty red now. You won't get away with this. Do you really think that's in any way relevant to me? I had plenty of time to talk to my boy before the cops arrived, you know? He won't stop screaming, am I right? You think he's ever gonna be okay? <laughs> I left my mark. Believe me. You, you bastard. What? You gonna shoot me? What's the point? I'm going to prison. Any of this. And you never will. Don't worry. Maybe you'll see me again, Agent. Maybe in the mirror. Turn, turn, turn. I hate turn, turn.
Yeah, every now and then they're just in peace. Rose knew that Rusty was in love with her, and she liked him too. She liked him a lot. He taught her to dance, and life had certainly taught her the value of a man who was gentle. He treated her well, made her smile, made her feel good. But Rusty wasn't the prince of her dreams, and that tended to underline the unbearable truth. She was no closer to that Hollywood magic than he was. center was heavy with an awful smell, as if some rotten, drowned thing had crawled up from its grave. Rusty kept coughing blood. My eyes were drawn to the twisted shape of his broken leg. The attack had been vicious. Max whined in his cage. Rusty's eyes were wild with fear and terror. He gasped. Mr. Wake, it happened just the way it was on that page. Yeah, the dark presence in the dark. In spite of its human mask, to describe the dark presence as intelligent would have implied human qualities on something decidedly inhuman. Nonetheless, it found the one spot in the diner that was dark enough. Some light spilled into the corridor, ravaging it. But it took the pain. Horrible as it was, the writer would soon fix that. He would be coming to the one place where it still had power. on that page I found came true it knew so dark it'll come back for me you must the lights in the office I have the key okay Rusty hang on I'll be right back whatever did this couldn't be far Rusty had found a page from the manuscript it would help me understand what had happened Good boy. Trash bag. Ooh, check the uh, box. See if you can.
different. It's going to be across the way, I think. Yep. There you go. Yep. Oh. The Thank only you, way to make sure that Rusty was safe was to get the power running and the lights back on. The visitor center was sturdy, but the impact turned the front of the building into splinters. Rusty was thrown across the lobby like a rag doll and hit the far wall hard. It didn't hurt until he tried to move and saw his leg bend the wrong way, felt the broken ribs stabbing him on the inside. Rusty howled in pain and fear, suddenly afraid to die alone. At the last instant, I changed direction and threw myself down. The axe splintered the trunk of a tree. I stumbled into the pool of bright light. My lungs burned. I was too exhausted to move. I tensed as I waited for the killing blow, but it never came. I raised my head. Nothing moved in the darkness beyond. For the moment, bathed in the cold light, I was safe. Someone had destroyed the circuit breaker. There was no way to get the lights back on. Rusty! Rusty! The ground was covered with oily patches that looked like liquid darkness. hole in the wall. Please! Don't feed the animals! Fishing! Yes. Who perches a park? Fishing. License! Obey! The park rangers and sergeants. At all times! Closer than 25 yards. Pets must be leashed. Yeah, all times. Never leave your pet unattended. It is against the law. I remove any books or historical artifacts from the park. Grow.
longer. We just wait. Forget about it, Barry. It's just me going crazy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You're not crazy. I wish you were crazy, but you're not crazy. Now, be careful. Stay in the cabin. Don't open the door for anyone. I mean it. last instant of consciousness, Rusty thought about Rose. He was older than she was. Rose was barely out of her teens. But she made him feel young, and forget what a train wreck his long-dead marriage had been. He still wore the ring. He'd been waiting for her to tell him to take it off. Now she never would. Peak was at the far end of the nature trail. Yay! It plays for stuff. This is about just as cool as the park in general. <laughs> Shoot guns are the answer to all of life's problems.
this is where it came from. No, I can't pull you out. Oh, oh. Oh, that's incorrect. Turn around. That will hurt you. Oh, dang. Nobody in Bright Falls seemed to know where Al was, but Rose, the waitress at the diner, had seen him. From what Barry could tell, Al pretty much fell off the face of the earth when he left the diner. Rose was just the kind of fan that Al hated, but she really tried to help. She was smart, too, knew a lot about what was going on in the town, knew a lot about Al, even knew who Barry was. Barry liked her. That was no big surprise. When it came to women, Barry and Al rarely saw eye to eye. Porta potties, scarier than the monsters? Yes. <laughs> I'm using it.
not your consequential details. Things. I turn the corner, afraid of what the flashlight's beam might reveal. Suddenly, a roughly painted symbol of a torch glowed in the light. Behind it, hidden by a rock, sat a battered metal trunk. It was here for a reason. Packed with supplies, batteries, flares, ammo. Things you need to make it through the darkness of the night. Something left behind by someone who knew what I knew, and more. This is going to go down. But bear alert. Geography. Maybe try running back.
at least before you hit the bear. Oh, I mean, what? I, I, I kind of, I kind of knew that was coming. All right. Yeah. Look, keep on the lookout though for that place that you saw with the furnace. I think it's here. Right. Yeah. Screwing with you. Dang it. Come on, checkpoint. Two weeks. You know, two weeks is Brendan's and my anniversary. Yay. Hmm. No, it's we'll okay. be here. We'll we, be we here. Oh, oh, cool. Thank you. We've, we're taking a trip earlier in the week. It's going to be great. We're going to combine it with an um, anniversary trip with a writing retreat. Yeah. It'll be great. Cool. Best cupcake in Brightsteiner. Yum. <laughs> it's a lie, though. Is it's it? a really narrow description. <laughs> we've got the best cupcakes we make. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so. Hey, Daniel, could you hit the light, perhaps? Uh, we. But we like the dark. Dark <laughs> for dark business. Well, although that business is kind of done now. Yep. So, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, stick around on the Twitch TV channel, because in about a minute, Cyan's show, or DJ Mon's show, is going to be starting. That'll be cool. And uh, then uh, Buddy Breakfast and Buddy Squire will be having their first shows. I, th I think it's their first shows. Or did they have that on this past Sunday? I forget. Well, whatever. I, I think it's their first shows. That's coming up later tonight. They got one hour each. So it'll be a good time. Stick around and listen to them. I'll be back next Thursday for This Week in History. And next week on Throne of Games, uh, John, our other co-host, will be here. And we will be beginning Amnesia the Dark Descent. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. And see you next time. <laughs>